Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a Digital Rebar Rack N uh, update about Core OS. Uh, let me say that again, Core OS, so or Container Linux, if you would prefer. I haven't heard anybody use that Core OS. Uh, we have a lot of people in community who are interested trying and using Core OS around Kubernetes, particularly. Um, and one of the things that we have just done is add Core OS support into the content libraries. Uh, this is in the rack end content uh, at this time. It's a standalone library. It lets you boot provision uh, CoreOS. Uh, it also takes advantage, if you want, of our kexec functionality. And I'm going to demo that for you uh, and show you basically where to get going. If you're interested in, in playing along with this, you can easily uh, do exactly the same thing um, using our uh, CoreOS. There is a CoreOS content set. It is tip only right now because this is still new stuff. And if you are used to digital rebar, you will be very excited to hear that it also uses the runner. So you can use ignition and the runner, both. Uh, and I'm going to show you all of that um, and, and how that works. So I've, I've downloaded CoreOS. I have, as part of this, uh, it's going to create a CoreOS boot, env, boot environment. That CoreOS boot environment uh, is going to require an ISO, so you need to download the ISO from, from the link here and then upload it into the file system. You can do that from the CLI or you can do it from um, by downloading the and then uploading it into the files list, sorry, the ISOs list, the boot ISOs. There is a CLI command for that. Um, let's see if I have it running up here somewhere. I do. So here it is, uh, boot DRP CLI. <laughs> Bootems upload ISO core OS, and that's going to transfer uh, the ISO into the system. So those are your, your prereqs. I'm going to show you what the bootemv looks like in a little bit, but I know you want to see the demo, so I'm going to jump to that. To make all this work, I have to build a workflow. Uh, so I have, there's two options with this. There is a core OS live install, and there is a core OS uh, to write to disk, so a, a core OS install. So CoreOS Live uses the CoreOS Live stage. Uh, in this case, I'm installing SSH keys, which you can totally do. I'm on Packet for this demo, so Packet SSH or your SSH keys. Uh, the runner works. Let me reinforce that. The runner works. So you can just run stages uh, if you want, in this case, installing SSH keys. So if you need to, you can use Ansible. I know a lot of people do that um, against your CoreOS systems, uh, sort of the anti-pattern for CoreOS, but you can do it, or you can use our runner, or you can use ignition files. It is up to you. Uh, and then this goes into a live wait, so the system's still running. If you look at the CoreOS install, which I'm not going to demo, I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader, you need to do CoreOS install, finish the install, then whatever steps you want, and then complete. Um, so pretty straightforward from those, those uh, perspectives. If you're in the CoreOS install, CoreOS Live is going to do most of the work. Um, and it's going to uh, uh, basically set up the, this boot environment. Uh, and that's about it. It's just switching you to the CoreOS boot env. And then Digital Rebar does its magic to make things happen. Uh, the CoreOS boot environment, which I'll show you here. Actually, I'm going to wait build some suspense, actually show you the thing working, because that's what you want to see in a demo. So I've built a couple of machines. Uh, in this case, this is the first time they've booted. So CoreOS 0, CoreOS 1 um, are over here. Here's CoreOS 1. Here's uh, Rob 1. It's my other machine. Here's CoreOS 0. So they're just sitting in Sledgehammer. This is using a terminal display, so I can actually watch the boot process and, and see things happen. And what I've done is globally, I've turned on kexec OK. It's a um, parameter setting. In CoreOS 1, I have set it off. So uh, CoreOS 0, if I come over here and I put it on the CoreOS live install process over here and jump to CoreOS 0, um, the runner is going to automatically pick the system up and start installing CoreOS. Uh, it can take a couple of seconds. There you go. And uh, since we're using kexec, it is literally, you can see at the bottom of the screen, we're starting the new kernel. It literally just started, uh, switched. So it switched from Sledgehammer directly into CoreOS. Uh, there is no reboot uh, time. So there's no BIOS posting, na 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 na. It is literally just going in and it's up. Almost up. Um, 
And uh, since we install the runner, we actually, it comes back, turns the machine on. So you'll see behind the scenes over here, uh, we, we think the machine's off because the runner hasn't checked in yet. As soon as the runner starts in CoreOS, uh, we'll actually get an event and show the machine is available. Uh, nice thing about that is then I can switch it back into uh, Sledgehammer just by switching it back into Sledgehammer. Uh, and that be it. Pretty darn fast. Um, uh, it's hard to imagine a much faster, <laughs> easier transition to CoreOS than what I just showed you. Uh, certainly excited. And in the behind the scenes, you can see we're now in CoreOS. You can say, oh, what happens if I don't do it with KExec? How much longer does it take? Uh, happy to show you that. Here's CoreOS. Just switched for the machine that doesn't have um, CoreOS, uh, the KExec in. In this case, it's going through, identifying it needs a reboot. System is now restarting. And um, we're going to have to go through the full BIOS posting, uh, DHCP phase, things like that. This is the power of, of KExec. Um, and and how things can actually work, um, and you can see the the time difference is is pretty drastic, right? We haven't even finished posting uh, the Pixie Boot process, let alone in, you know going through all the BIOS, um, and the other system would already have been up and running. Uh, as a matter of fact, yeah. Now now this is just going to do the same process, but slowly. Uh, back over here, if I jump back and um, send it back to Sledgehammer, uh, this system over here is already going back through the reboot, or sorry, the switch to Sledgehammer, because it's not rebooting, it's just swapping to Sledgehammer, uh, which is also highly optimized and uh, will boot very quickly as well. So in this case, we're showing, I went to CoreOS, I ran my CoreOS stuff. If I needed to switch to a new CoreOS, um, we could get a new boot end for it. Or um, I could switch to Sledgehammer, do work in Sledgehammer, RAID and BIOS configuration, stuff like that, jump back into CoreOS. Um, and frankly, I can do that faster than uh, it, takes <laughs> it takes to um, reboot the, the actual system. Nope, it's up, and uh, the reboot system is done too. Uh, so that's, that's the, the demo. It's, it's that simple to install, run CoreOS, jump between it, patch, uh, keep things going. So really moving down the immutable path. Um, if you install it to disk, uh, which you can do, it's just going to be the same thing, but a little slower. Let me give you some background information here. Um, what this looks like, because I know if you're using CoreOS, you're like, but my ignition files, how do I do it? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the boot env for CoreOS. Uh, which is typical to a digital rebar boot env with uh, required parameters and boot parameters and things like that. Uh, and then it runs uh, a, degree, a certain degrees of, templ of templates. The ignition template, so digital rebar is template rendering. Um, you don't, not everything ends up on the machine. It's actually available as a web access thing, which is where the ignition file ends up. And this is making the ignition file available uh, as a template. I'll show you what that template looks like. But if you want a different ignition file, you can specify it. You can, it's parameterized. So you can write your own ignition file and put your own ignition file in and layer it in as, a, as an alternative to the one that we are providing by default. Um, you don't have to cleave everything into our default one. So if I jump over to my boot, uh, to my CoreOS templates, uh, what you will see is there is a basic ignition template. Uh, this is the one that we're going to provide uh, out of the box that just provides the, enough to bring the systems up. Uh, there is the option to do um, select different templates. So if you provide an, your own template, you can select it as part of the CoreOS. So if you have ignition templates, just create digital rebar templates. Um, Follow our color demo to learn how to do that remotely and then push them up um, so you're not editing on the endpoint but in, in a code repo, repo somewhere. And that's it. Uh, it's going to let you override, create your own templates. Learn the digital rebar system so you can do uh, template injection and take information from the machine inventory, data, disk, networking, color of the sky, whatever you need, and you can add those into the template expansion so that the ignition files reflect data about your system, your inventory, how you want to operate. Um, and then one of the things that's really nice here is that you've, you're still in the digital rebar workflow systems. 
uh, because the runner's running. And so if you need to take that machine and switch it to something else or, or uh, move it around, reboot it, do whatever actions you need, it's there. Uh, you haven't compromised digital rebar in any way uh, by using a very minimal OS like CoreOS. Uh, of course, you can do a lot of this with Sledgehammer 2, which is what we, we tell people. With, so it's Sense 7, it's a little bit more widely supported um, by, by manufacturers. So this actually gives you the freedom to do both. Uh, use Sledgehammer when you need it, and use CoreOS when you need it. Use whatever you want, really. Um, we're pretty excited. Uh, people have been asking for this for a while, and, and the runner integration uh, sort of pushes it over the top of utility. Uh, I hope you'll take a look at it, um, play with it. This is um, stuff that you can easily download and extend into your existing digital rebar infrastructure. If you have questions, please, please join us uh, on Slack, uh, ping us, um, you know, find one way or another to get in touch with, with us. Uh, and of course, then we take these basic building blocks and extend them quite a bit into enterprise uh, BIOS firmware, out-of-band management, integration to CMDBs, logging systems, conformance databases, and things like that. So Racken's always happy to help you um, take some basic tech like this and then move it into enterprise capabilities. This is Rob Hirschfeld, signing out.